I want to figure out how it is that if one can identify the four or five or six uh, risk-modifying behaviors, how do we get people to do that? A behavior modification, it seems to me, is a large challenge. Uh, and I would say the government policy is probably not going to be very helpful here because my guess is that Facebook knows more about me than my government and maybe what most stimulates me in terms of my socialization, my exercise, my diet. So how do we get people to change uh, their risk-modifying behaviors at scale around the world? Wow, that's a good question, but I can give a few answers what I, we have learned from the finger. First, I really think that the brain health motivates people. When people know that this is something good for your brain health throughout the life course, that is the motivational factor. People don't know. There are still many people who don't know that you can reduce the risk of dementia. So that increasing knowledge and awareness, I think, is number one. The second thing, I think it should be something positive. And that's why the five fingers, you don't need to change everything at once, but making it to be something nice, like dancing, like music. Uh, so Pleasure. I think that is something exactly the answer. So that is something what motivates people as well. And the third thing, I think we can maybe learn more using new technology. We can maybe help, we can get help from the new technology to follow our behavior. And somehow the concept e-fingers could be something to f further develop here as well. So I think there are many things what we can do. Final thing, I think, as you said, individual, we can do certain things, but the health policy should be there, making the healthy choices to easy ones for everyone. So I think, George, that's a critical issue. A lot of health behaviour, it's very hard to change individual behaviour. If you're trying to eat well in a family that eats poorly, if you're trying to move well in a family that doesn't do much, if you in a family that never dances, it's hard to suddenly be dancing on your own. So one of the things I think is that we've got to think about the social groups and the cultures. What can we do to encourage families? A lot of this happens now in childhood, early childhood development, early childhood education. The governments are investing in trying to support. And we, of course, classically do that. We've not done that so much around ageing. We've not actually provided the social structures. In fact, we tend to say to people, don't work, stop, retire, be isolated, and to see them as a burden rather than to capitalise on the contributions they could make in care, in education, others. So that the individual behaviour change, I think your point is very hard, is really hard. It's much more likely to occur and be sustained for the finger things to work. You can't just do them one day or three weeks or three months. You have to build it into your regular lifestyle that it happens for you and those around you. So I think we need to look at what are the incentives for social groups. I think pleasurable things to be done, socialisation things that are done, things that build on different cultures in different places to be reinforced, the social gatherings that people have, and they may be through religious groups, through cultural groups, through other community groups. What are the things that we can capitalise on and invest in, whether they're private investors, whether they're by governments, whether by other organisations, to achieve the behavioural change at scale? And then to use new technologies to enforce that. I'm associated with a number of these efforts in developing countries in the early childhood years. People are desperate for information about the right things to do with their children, the right things to do in their families. And I don't think we've provided good information. What does work? Things that Mia was just emphasising. What things can we do? And what things could you find in your culture that allow you to do that and to really reinforce the value of that? It's not just for entertainment. It's for really important health. It's a, pick up Harris's point, it's an asset for the community that we should invest in and that will be important to the continuing economic development and social development of each of our families and communities.